The DF200, a diesel locomotive operated by JR Freight, holds the title of the most powerful domestic diesel locomotive. It emerged as a high-performance locomotive that broke through the long-standing stagnation of diesel traction, which had persisted due to the decline in freight transport during the final years of JNR. Unlike today's CO2 reduction policies, the era marked a renewed recognition of railway transport efficiency from the perspective of economically rational energy utilization. Buoyed by a booming economy, the post-privatization period of JNR presented a prime opportunity for the revival of rail freight transport. On non-electrified lines, high-output locomotives were in demand, and the DF200 was designed free from the conventional constraints of JNR-era diesel locomotives. Abandoning the traditional hydraulic transmission, it adopted rapidly advancing power semiconductor technology and AC motors to mitigate the weaknesses of conventional diesel-electric systems. Forsaking domestic sourcing, it was equipped with lightweight, high-output foreign-made engines, enabling a total of 3,400 horsepower with two 1,700 horsepower units. This output was nearly double that of the DF90, a domestically proposed electric-type diesel locomotive by Hitachi in the early Showa 30s, mid-1950s. Although the combination of lightweight engines, motors, and generators was unthinkable in JNR-era diesel-electric systems, the inherently complex structure of electric-type locomotives still resulted in increased weight. Since use on lower-grade lines with strict axle load limits was not considered, the weight increase was tolerated. The resulting higher adhesive performance and increased weight on driving axles enhanced the locomotive's ability to haul heavy trains. Thus, despite having approximately one, Five times the engine output compared to the DD-51, the DF-200 could haul trains previously requiring double-headed DD-51S with a single unit, achieving operational efficiency and rationalization. Even during the JNR era, eliminating double-headed DD-51 operations across various regions had already become a pressing issue. The DE-50, equipped with a 2,000-horsepower engine, was developed, and there were expectations on the ground for a powerful locomotive with two such engines. However, due to the decline in JNR freight transport, the future of the DE50 became uncertain, and development was ultimately cancelled. Although the engine saw limited practical use in emergency power supplies and pumps, the issue of insufficient tractive effort caused by cavitation in the first stage of the hydraulic transmission remained unresolved, bringing the entire project to an end. Meanwhile, the DML61 series engine mounted on the DD51 was later improved to 1,350 horsepower and utilized in the DE10, leading to consideration of a locomotive with two such engines. However, even with increased engine, if the adhesive effective weight i.e., the weight on the driving axles remained the same as the DD51, the balancing speed on gradients would increase, but the ability to haul trains uphill would not improve. The only countermeasure was to add dead weight to increase axle load, but this would result in speed restrictions due to track strength limitations, defeating the purpose. Therefore, it became necessary to make the middle bogey of the DD-51 a powered axle, adopting an F-type configuration. While using powered middle bogies like the Shinkansen 911 was an option, the limited flexibility of the drive shaft restricted passage through sharp curves and low number turnouts, making it impractical for conventional lines. Thus, the proposal shifted to using two AAA axle arrangement bogies, already proven in the DE10, to achieve an F-type configuration. During testing of the DE50, the high-speed performance of its bogies was evaluated, and it was generally deemed acceptable even beyond 100 km per hour. The DML61 engine was also projected to reach approximately 1500 horsepower, paving the way for the future introduction of the DF51 as a 3000 horsepower locomotive. While the DE50 offered only moderate performance, the DF51 was estimated to be capable of hauling many trains that previously required double-headed DD51S, albeit with slightly less capability. It was expected to contribute to the efficiency of freight transport, but due to the sharp decline in JNR freight operations from the late Showa 50s onward, the locomotive never materialized. Had the DF51 been realized, how would it have fared in a performance comparison with the DF200? In terms of engine output, the DF51's 3,000 horsepower falls short by just over 10% compared to the DF200's 3,400 horsepower. Comparing tractive effort characteristics, the DF51 is weaker by the margin of its lower output, as illustrated in this diagram. 
Note that the DF-51's characteristics are estimated based on the efficiency and auxiliary drive losses of the DD-51. The difference in engine output affects the balancing speed on gradients, and when hauling trains at equal weight, the DF-200 achieves over 5 km per hour higher balancing speed. The most significant difference lies in starting tractive effort. The difference in axle load 14 tons versus 16 tons has a direct impact, and the inverter-controlled AC motors of the DF-200 are less prone to wheel slip, maintaining an adhesion coefficient of at least 0.3. Under certain conditions, it can reach 0.35, and when all traction motors operate at maximum torque with axle load transfer compensation turned off, the starting tractive effort reaches 34 tons. In contrast, the DF-51, with two engines controlled via 14 notches and incorporating hydraulic transmissions, suffers from torque fluctuations during notch-up operations. These fluctuations are transmitted to the driving wheels, causing pulsating tractive effort and reduced adhesion. To mitigate this issue, the DD-52, considered as a freight-dedicated version of the DD-51, explored a mechanism where the outputs of two hydraulic transmissions were combined, and each engine was alternately notch-controlled. This allowed for smoother control equivalent to 28 notches. It is likely that this mechanism would have been adopted for the DF-51 as well, potentially enabling unified drive across all driving axles and achieving adhesion performance close to that of the DF-200. However, the difference in axle load would still result in a gap in tractive effort. Unlike today's upgraded JR lines that allow heavy high-speed DMUs to operate efficiently, many regional trunk lines at the time had a standard axle load limit of 14 tons. The DD-51, with variable axle load, could temporarily increase axle load to 15 tons at low speeds to gain traction but had to reduce it to 14 tons at higher speeds to avoid excessive track stress. Locomotives without variable axle load mechanisms could not exceed the 14-ton limit. Had development of the DE50 continued and the issues with its hydraulic transmission been resolved, a 4000 HP class locomotive might have become a realistic possibility. However, as long as the 14-ton axle load restriction remained, realizing a 4000 HP class locomotive was a difficult proposition. Had a locomotive been developed with the same concept as the DF200, dedicated to lines like the Maroran main line where track conditions were favorable, it might well have been realized. However, with an F-class configuration, the car body would become excessively long, and keeping the axle load within 16 tons would be difficult, necessitating consideration of an H-class design. Even with a BB axle arrangement, keeping each unit within 64 tons would be extremely challenging, but assuming thorough weight reduction made it feasible, the total weight could be held to around 128 tons, slightly lighter than the current EH200, and the adhesive effective weight would increase by approximately 30%. Even with weight reduction efforts, the total weight exceeds that of the post-war developed DD50 double-headed configuration, which was effectively operated as a DH-type locomotive. However, the output at wheel rim is more than double that of the DD50S. In such a case, even with torque fluctuations during notch-up, the locomotive could potentially surpass the DF200 in starting tractive effort, delivering high tractive effort from low speeds and outperforming the DF200 across nearly the entire speed range. Had such a locomotive been realized, Japanese diesel locomotives would have reached the global standard of the time and likely earned high praise. Despite this, double-headed DD-51 operations continued, resulting in inefficient usage patterns. While full electrification could theoretically enable single-unit operation, the reality was that such electrification was unattainable, trapped in an ongoing dilemma. However, in reality, JNR faced a severe decline in freight demand especially on non-electrified lines, leaving little room for high-output locomotives to operate. Although freight transport recovered after the privatization of JNR, there have been whispers that the successor to the DF200 for non-electrified lines might be an H-class locomotive of this kind. Naturally, it would adopt electric-type traction, and it will be exciting to see how far its output can be put.